you've only gone and downloaded a multiple sources.net podcast. For more episodes of this show and a bunch of other content covering everything from NBA teams to professional wrestling, visit multiple sources.net. Multiple sources.net. But wait, act now and you too could join multiple sources.net. Yeah, we're um we're looking for people to do their own podcasts about different NBA teams. Uh, we're looking for blog authors, video highlight creators, uh, basically anything you can think of to write about sports. You can kind of write or create to your heart's content. So if you want to help us and join this up and coming independent blog and podcast network monster, go to multiplesources.net. I'll stick something in the sidebar that says join us or something equally unfunny. So go and click on that. Join us. Hello, everyone, and welcome to It's Always Sunny in Phoenix. We are a podcast where every week, three Suns fans discuss te- the team as well as general NBA thoughts and talk about sports in general every once in a while. My name is David. I'm hosting for a change, which is going to go terribly wrong <laughs> since I've already babbled up my words, but whatever. Uh, we, of course, have Mitch and Charlie. Mitch is back. Hi. and. Charlie is still here, so whatever. Hey, hey. There's that. (laughs) So we are, of course, on iTunes. You can search up It's Always Sunny in Phoenix on the podcast app or in iTunes in general. And subscribe and leave us a review and rate and all that other stuff. So we are going to be starting off with our recaps, if I can get to the page, which I did. (laughs) So the first game that was this week that we didn't cover was, or that we did Recap, whatever. Anyways, we did the Knicks, which Charlie covered. So take it away. Okay. Well, sadly, the Knicks beat us in every single stat category this game. And I mean every single one. And the final score showed it. It was 128 to 97. And New York isn't a three point shooting team, but they were on fire and went 16 for 24 from downtown. That's 66%. And it's tough to win a game when the other team does that to you. They also had nine blocks and did a great job shutting down the paint against us. And just the Suns really couldn't get it going, and they only played one decent quarter. That was the third quarter. But we were already down 20, so it didn't really make much of a difference. Uh, The Knicks were able to play a lot of their bench guys through the fourth quarter, and that's when... Derek Williams had a monster quarter. He scored 18 of his points, all of his points in that quarter. And he had three really nice alley-oop catches and then a huge windmill. And the Suns, they just looked defeated after going through all that. The Knicks were led by Carmelo Anthony and Sasha Vujicic, who scored 23 apiece. Vujicic was on fire hitting threes. And other than that, seven Knicks scored in double figures. And then Rolo, Robin Lopez, had five of those nine blocks I just mentioned. uh, The Suns were just having trouble getting into the paint with Porzingis and Lopez down there. And it was tough to put up buckets. And the only two Suns really worth talking about this game are Booker and Len. Booker went for 32 points on 50% shooting from the floor, and Len added a double-double with 14 points and 10 rebounds. Those two guys have been the bright spots for the Suns these last two weeks, and nothing changed here. All right, and of course, after every recap, where we go a little bit in-depth during the podcast, we do our one-sentence recaps. So, Mitch, do you want to go first? Yeah, um... You know, this is so redundant, but I'm just going to say Booker and Len are the future. Definitely. It's it's become a just a norm to be able to talk about both those guys in those sentence recaps. My one sentence recaps is there's always going to be that one game that brings us back down yeah, to earth. Yeah. We had we had two really good games in a row, at one back to back and then we we had we had that little bit of a yeah we still suck right now <laughs> but you know it is what it is of course we do we did our challenge we did points rebounds and assists 
because me and Charlie aren't very uh, creative, <laughs> lazy, or as creative. We're, we're lazy. <laughs> we're, we're lazy. We're lazy. Let's let's be real here. All right. So the first one we did was points, of course. Mitch and I said Booker. Charlie said Len, and Booker scored thirty-two. All right. So Mitch and I, Mitch and I both got two points for that. Rebounds. We all said Lynn, and it was definitely Lynn. Lynn, I said Lynn, whatever. Uh, it was Lynn who had the most rebounds, so we each got a point. And then for assists, Charlie and I said Booker, Mitch said Price, and Mitch got it right with Price. So our final score after the Knicks game is Mitch with 26. Ooh. I had I have 28, and Charlie has 19. So Mitch is pretty close. Up. Pretty close points wise. Get trying to right, reclaim the there. lead. And Charlie's getting ready for that late push in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So I might just tank we'll and looking... go for that number one pick or <laughs> <laughs> You might pull a Suns right now trying to trying to recoup your losses. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so the next game after the Knicks game was the Nuggets game, which I covered. It was a 116 to 106 loss from what I remember. And it was, it was one, wait, no, it was 116 to one or to 98. Sorry. I read that wrong. I don't know what I was doing anyways. So Booker was the big bright spot for, with 35 points. And he was basically the only bright spot minus John, John Luer. I almost said John Lynn. Lens in my brain. But uh, John Lennon was really good off the bench for us. John Luer <laughs> did pretty good. Just real quick. He had 19 points in 17 minutes, and he went 8 or 10 from the field and hit all three of his his free throws. And he had seven rebounds and just did good in general off the bench. We needed someone to be an energy guy. We needed a couple more than just him. But, you know, what can you do? Devin Booker, 35 points in 44 total minutes. He went 12 of 24 from the field, shot 10 of 11 from the free throw line, only shot one of five from behind the arc, which he's normally a little bit better from that, but he's still, he was able to score in other places, especially from the foul line. He added in three rebounds, five assists, a steal, and a block. And he was really the only, the only bright spot minus throwing in lure in there. If... So the Suns shot all together during the game, 33 of 89 from the field, which is 37.1%, 6 of 28 from 3, 21.4%, and 26-33, for seven, which is 78.8% from the free throw line. If you take out Devin Booker's shots, the Suns shot 21 of 65 from the field, which is 32.3%. Wow. They shot 5 of 23 from deep, which is 21.7%. And 16 of 22 from the line, which is 72.7%. So, just looking at that, Booker bumped up our field, our shooting from the field in general about 5%. And 6% from the line. He hurt the three-point line shooting, but no one really did good from that. Uh, that is basically my recap. is a pretty rough game all around. So, do you guys want to go ahead and just go to your one-sentence recaps? Uh Whichever one of you guys wants to go first. I'll take it. Um, watching Booker score 35 points makes the outcome of the game seem a bit irrelevant. <laughs> Devin Booker. That's all I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I do also want to point out, uh, I almost forgot in my recap, but he is one of only two uh, teenagers to score back to, to have back-to-back 30-point -back games. The other one's LeBron James. So <laughs> keep going with these we're, LeBron comparisons. I'm fine with them. <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna uh, jump to a conclusions, but uh, Devin Booker is the next LeBron James Basically. slash Michael Jordan slash whatever any of those. So <laughs> not jump into conclusions, but he's the next goat. Anyways, um, we're gonna go over to our challenge for the Nuggets game. So for points, Mitch said. Alex Lynn would get the most points. Charlie and I said Booker, and we were both right with Booker. I was very scared after Booker put up 30 in the next game, 
Uh, the last couple of times he's put up 30, he's put up only uh, about around 15 points, I think, or a little less. So it was that was that scared me a little bit, but he pulled through. Look what happens when Mitch doesn't pick Booker. I know. What the heck? <laughs> the the first game I don't pick Booker in forever. <laughs> Jeez. It's, it's what you get. It's what you get, Mitch. I know. Uh, <laughs> I, I Well, when I saw that result, I was like, I might as well just pick Booker from here on out, even though I don't have to anymore. And that's when me and Charlie know to not pick Booker yeah. and just pick someone really? else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, for rebounds, all of us said Len. It was pretty close, but Alex Len had the most rebounds, so you each get a point for that. And then for assists, uh, Mitch and I said Booker, Charlie said Price, and it was neither of those guys. Or no, no, it was all of those guys, actually. I forgot completely that we had just gone over that. It was all those guys and Knight, so none of us got points for that. So, final score after the Nuggets game is Mitch with 27 points. Okay. I have 31 points, and Charlie has 22 points. Okay. So, it's it's going places. Yeah. Anyways, so we had the Warriors game as our only other game to recap during the week, and Mitch took over that one. So, go ahead and take it away, Mitch. Okay, this was... One of my favorite games of the season, actually. It it was a 123-116 loss, but no one cares about the score in this game. The The Warriors were coming off uh, playing Portland the night before, so it was the second night of a back-to-back. And one of my friends actually asked me, what do you think is going to be the result of this game, even though they're, they're uh, on a back-to-back? And I said, we're going to get crushed. I, I'm looking forward to actually getting to watch the Warriors since they're having such a historic season. But it was actually close. We had a nine-point lead at the end of the third quarter. And if you want to have your faith restored in the Suns, watch the first three quarters of this game. Seriously. It was it was just so fun to watch. Uh, so the Warriors, everyone who you would expect to do well did. Steph Curry had 35 points and he just hit some of those ridiculous threes and it was like whenever the Suns would hit a three to extend the lead he would just hit another three like the next possession and just keep the score the the same differential as before um and then we had Clay Thompson who had 20 points he also had six rebounds three assists and a steal uh it's pretty cool to see him and Booker play against each other because they're so similar and so many people make the comparison to Booker and Thompson. So that is really exciting to watch. And then Draymond Green was just doing his all-around job with uh, 19 points. He had six assists, four rebounds, two steals, a block. Um, But really, I think the reason we were in this game was because of foul trouble. We were able to get both Curry and Thompson into foul trouble. They both had four, but they were on the bench until the fourth quarter when they played a lot. And, you know, it's so funny with these Warriors teams that this team just can do whatever they want for three quarters, basically, and then just turn it on in the fourth and finish off whoever they're playing. It was almost like they were toying with us a little bit, but I think we played really well. And uh, welcome back, Brandon Knight. 30 points on 11 for 20 shooting, uh, six rebounds, seven assists, a steal, a block. Really nice game for Knight. Uh, Booker had a good game too, 18 points, 11 assists. That's another uh, one of his double-doubles with assists, and that's great. And then Alex Len, another great game for Len. 26 points on 10 for 18 shooting, 13 rebounds, 3 assists. Really just a lot of fun. Just a great game. I I really enjoyed it. So, yeah, go watch those first three quarters. And then if you want to see some just amazing basketball from the Warriors, watch the fourth quarter too. (laughs) Steph had one of those 
threes from the quarter where he turned around and started running back before it even yep. went in. And yep. uh, it just makes me jealous. Yeah. Not even mad, just he is, jealous. He's ruining basketball for some kids in the same way that Kobe ruined it in the early 2000s mm. of just dumb shots that you shouldn't be taking. It's 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 very similar. And to your point, uh, you said, real, just real quick, um, you talked about how they seem like they can just turn it on and win a game in the fourth. Not only is Steph really bailing them out, but... It reminds me a lot of the Heat. It was the 2013 Heat mm. when they went on that really long win, uh, win streak. I think it was like 27 games or something like that. There were there were nights where they looked awful, and then LeBron would bail them out or something like that, and they would just turn it on in the fourth and end up winning a game yeah. that looked like they should have lost. Yeah. And the other thing that I forgot to mention was uh, they had some nice production from Maurice Bates, too. He had 25 points. And nine rebounds. So, I mean, I guess that helps quite a bit when a guy that you don't expect to do that well does. Yeah, Spates apparently has a... Steve Kerr... Oh, I was just going to say, apparently Steve Kerr is the Spates whisperer because yeah. he looked awful <laughs> when Luke Walton was, was coaching while Kerr was out, and then all of a sudden Kerr comes back and Spites looks like he can shoot a lot. Yeah. Really well. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to be blunt. I want to talk about the Warriors a little more because it's fun. But yeah. Spates, Spates, uh, that jump shot for a big guy, that's pretty good. He uh, he had a lot of open space around the perimeter. We had trouble getting out there, and he he was just drilling those jumpers, and that killed us. And one more thing about the Warriors. I got to listen to the great Al McCoy in the car before the game started, and he mentioned – that Draymond Green is leading the Warriors in both rebounds per game and assists per game. Uh, he's getting 9.6 rebounds and 7.4 assists per game. Wow. And I'd like to go back historically a little bit and see who else does something like that. I, I don't even know if LeBron has been doing that over his career for his teams, but that, mm-hmm. that surprised me when I heard that. That's, that's some impressive stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think he's easily the second best player on that team. Agreed. Yeah, it's it's so tough because they just have so much talent everywhere. It's like, how do you... No one is going to be able to stop them. And I don't see anyone being able to stop them next year either. It's going to depend. It's depending on how free agency goes, the cap's going to be crazy. That's true. That's true. Uh, I mean, a lot of teams that don't have cap space are all of a sudden going to have almost room for another max contract. So uh, there's going to, there's going to be a lot of factors going in the next year. I think they could easily, as long as they sign back Barnes, they sign back, uh, I think Azili is going to be a free agent as well, I and mean, he's hurt, but he's really good for them uh, when he's not hurt. I think that those kind of moves, and they're going to have some tough questions in the off season, and we'll see if they're able to keep their core together and possibly go for another championship run next year. I I think they're okay as long as they have Steph Curry. Seriously, he, that guy, Yeah, he, how could anyone not like watching him either? He is just great to watch. <laughs> he's such a great player. And at this point, I would say he's probably the best player in the world. I'd say so too. The only gripe that a basketball purist could have is that he shoots some pretty terrible shots, but they go, they go in. Yeah, he <laughs> makes some pretty terrible shots too. <laughs> exactly. It it's the it's the it's Kobe from the early two thousands. Yep. Yep. Fade away jump shots with three people on them that go in and it shouldn't be shots that anyone should take. I mean, taking a shot almost from the logo from center court. Yeah. That's not something you should ever do. No. <laughs> unless there's like two seconds left in the quarter. It's so effortless too. 
he shoots that like he's shooting a three, like with his toes right on the line. Well, what was it when uh, he was talking about the OT game against the Thunder? Uh huh. He shot that like really deep shot at the end of OT to win. Mm-hmm. He said, "Oh, I didn't have I didn't have enough energy to try and go in for a clip or for a layup or something <laughs> like that." It's like, "Oh, so you it's you're saying that it's easy to just throw up a shot like that and make it okay?" Well, that's fair. And actually, I want to go back to something. I think you said this, David, that it's almost not good for the game. I saw a great video a while ago of a high school game and it the the title was like the Steph Curry effect or something like that and it's all these high school kids shooting these deep threes and missing and one team just got offensive rebound after offensive rebound and they just pass it out and shoot another horrible three and they took probably seven of them until the other team got a defensive rebound it was pretty funny but I kind of see that happening a little bit <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty rough, and I'm sure that coaches on the lower levels aren't a fan of people trying to imitate those threes. Yeah. But, but the- uh, let's go ahead. Do, do we really need to do uh, one sentence recaps? or Probably not. We talked enough about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we've uh, been enough yeah. talking about this. But uh, So let's just go over to our uh challenges for this game so when going for points we all had a different answer which is good Ooh. none of us had the right answer <laughs> but you know whatever uh mitch picked mirza i picked archie and charlie picked booker and it was night so there's that <laughs> welcome back night yeah i know i I'm, I'm okay with that one and it was on some pretty decent efficiency, so can't complain too much. So for rebounds, uh, Charlie and I said Chandler, Mitch said Len, and it was Len, and I'm pretty sure it was only by a rebound. Ooh. I think I think Chandler had, hold on, yeah, Chandler had 12, and Len had 13. So all right, I'm pretty sure that was the same. That was the same for the Nuggets. The Nuggets. I'm pretty sure Chandler had 12, and Len had 13. So. They're getting around the same. And then last one, assists. Mitch said Archie. I said Price. Charlie said Booker. It was Booker. He had 11 assists, so pretty good. Point totals at the end of the Warriors game. Mitch had tw- Mitch has 28 points. I have 31 points. And Charlie has 23 points. So. Okay. All right. Still floating around. Still floating around. Um <laughs> So we're going to jump into our previews now. Every week we preview. We have one of our guys picks a key to the game. One of our guys picks a player. And then one of us goes a little bit more in depth. So we're going to preview the T-Wolves game. So Charlie, do you have key to the game for that. So go for it. All right. The Suns need to protect the paint and force the Wolves to shoot jump shots. Um, Towns and Gorgie Dang have both been playing pretty well lately, and if the Suns want to compete, they're going to have to make the Timberwolves rely on guys like Rubio and Levine to get them going, hopefully from the outside. If we can shut down the lane and stop some penetration, I think we'll have a shot. Yeah, and my player to watch, it's really tough. I think there's easily five guys you can pick to watch for players. If you want to watch Rubio and just see how much better he makes that team, if you want to watch Wiggins, who... Has a really good defensive game, and is still his offensive game is just coming along. If you want to watch Zach Levine and watch him do dumb dunk contest dunks and games, <laughs> Towns, who's the easiest, who's easily the rookie of the year, it's not even close. Or Gorgie Dang, even who is starting with Towns and is really tearing it up. Any of those guys could be a player to watch. I'll I'll definitely say Towns though, because. He, him, this rookie class is ridiculous. I'm watching these rookies play. It's it's pretty great. So that's my player. Mitch, you want to go a little bit more in depth since you will be the one cover on the game? Yeah. Uh, one thing that I noticed right off the bat is Andrew Wiggins is averaging 20.7 points this season. 
I didn't realize that until just looking at their stat sheet. That's pretty impressive. Um, and then, I mean, of course, you've got Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, just such a great player already. He's, I'm really excited to see what he can develop into. Uh, he's averaging 17.7 this season, along with uh, 10.3 rebounds. So averaging a double-double in his rookie season is really impressive. We'll see how Len and Chandler can do against him. Uh, Chandler, I, I really don't know how Chandler will be able to hang since uh, Towns is so much younger. And Len just, I don't think, has the power and the physicality quite yet. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But I think that's just a testament to how great Towns already is to be able to say, Alex Len and Tyson Chandler will have a hard time with this rookie. Uh, and then Shabazz Muhammad is another guy that uh, I I kind of like and gets overlooked sometimes. He's averaging 10.3 points this season per game. Um, and then Rubio, of course. Uh, he had that game winner the other day, which was really impressive. But he's averaging 8.7 assists per game. And... He just sets guys up so well, and that's really nice to watch. His smooth passing is really impressive. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching this one. All right. And something that I want to – wait. No, I didn't actually want to jump on that. Anyways, <laughs> never mind. Uh, we're going to go to our challenges. We're sticking with the same as last week because – I'm hosting, and I suck at being creative. So, we're going to go ahead and go with points first. So, Mitch, who do you think is going to score the most points for the Suns? I have to go Devin Booker. So, in that case, I'm not going to go Devin Booker. Uh, <laughs> Bold. <laughs> I, I, think, I think I'm going to go Brandon Knight. I thought about going night actually, but I I don't know. I I like Booker. I'm gonna I like go Booker too. But... I'm gonna go night as well. I see him getting those minutes back up, and if he shoots anything like he did against the Warriors, I assume he'll be putting up twenty plus again. So night. Yeah, if he if he has that consistency, he even on his off nights he was hitting twenty. So. I think that's good. Um, I think that's an easy one to go. So for rebounds, who do you guys think is going to have the most rebounds? Hmm. I think oh, this is tough. And so this is just any play, player or all Suns? Oh, it's all Suns. Just Suns. Just Suns. Just Suns. Because I was going to say Towns. Um <laughs> oh, man. This is tough. I think I'm still going to go Len, but I'm not super confident in that. See, I'm going to go safe, and I think Len's just a safe answer right now. Yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and go with Len. And just to be different, I'll go with Chandler. Maybe he'll one-up Len this time like he hasn't been able to the last few. <laughs> yeah, maybe he'll get that those two extra rebounds. All right. And then finally, assists. Who do you think is going to have the most assists in this game? Uh, I think I'm going to go Knight on this one. I like Knight as well. I think that if he's still going to uh, be taking the main load on offense now that he's back, I think Knight's just an easy one to go with. Yeah. I'm going to go Booker. I like. I think he's becoming a pick-and-roll wizard. I think he – I really like watching him run that. He's smart with the ball. He's patient. I'll go Booker. I love watching him run that with Tyson Chandler too, especially after watching the rookie vet videos that Steve Nash has been producing. It's really yeah. cool to see that. And there was one point in the Warriors game where Booker put a, like a perfect pass 
right to Tyson Chandler, and Tyson wasn't able to – it was an alley-oop, and Chandler wasn't able to dunk it, but it was the only spot that Chandler was going to be able to get it. It was almost like a fade route in the NFL where it's like you have to put the ball where only your guy can get it, and Booker did that, and Chandler was able to just tip it in. But it, it's been really nice seeing Booker to Chandler on the pick and roll. Yeah, his passing is really good. I – would feel normally comfortable picking him for assists, but I'm a little nervous of who's going to be taking more of the shots and who's going to be possessing the ball the most. Mm -hmm. So that's the only reason why I didn't go with him, but his passing has been pretty great. These last couple of games, him and Chandler are looking really good together. Him and him and Len both are looking for each other. If Len has the ball in the post and he doesn't think he can do it, he's been looking for Booker and Booker has been looking for Len in the post. So, I like both those guys, and or I like Booker's passing in general is what I meant to say. Anyways, <laughs> so any other thoughts on the Wolves game coming up? Or I think I'm good. Yeah, let's move on. All right, so next is the Jazz game. I'm going to pick a key for the game, and that key is going to be offense. The la- our last two games against the Jazz this season, or two games in general this season, we've only had one guy scoring 20 points, and that was Brandon Knight off the bench in uh, our first game, and we still had blood. So uh, we've really just had, in general, a hard time scoring against the Jazz. So we're going to need to have someone step up and go for 20, I think, if we want a shot in this game. Mm-hmm. And I think our... our just offensive game in general. We we need to bring that firepower and bring some intensity. All right, and Mitch, if you want to go ahead and pick a player to watch for the Jazz. Yeah, I'm going to go with Rudy Gobert in this one. He is the second year, or well, he has two years experience, a 7-1 center. He's averaging 10 points per game and 11 rebounds and 2.3 blocks per game. He's really quite a force down low. In the last 10, uh, his his scoring is down a little bit, 8.3 points per game, but his rebounding is up 12.5 points per game. And in the month of March, he's averaging 14.2 rebounds per game, which is really impressive. And we've been talking a lot about the battle down low, and I think this is going to be another good matchup with Len and Chandler versus Gobert. So... Yeah, I'll, I'll be looking at Gobert. All right. And, Charlie, you are going to be covering this game, so you want to go ahead and uh, go a little bit more in depth for us? Yeah, so like we've said, the Jazz have won both times this season, so they're up 2-0 in the season series, and I would not be surprised if they ended up sweeping it. Uh, the Jazz are just a few games out of that eight seed for the Western playoff picture, so I expect them to be coming out strong, and they can't afford to lose any games right now. Um, and then, like we've said, their defense is just pr- a notch up compared to a lot of the teams in the NBA with Gobert patrolling the middle down there. The stifle tower makes it tough on everybody. <laughs> and then I really like Rodney Hood. He's played and started 62 games this season, and he's having a solid year. I think he has about 14 and a half points per game. And, you know, he's a big shooting guard. He can score it. He can play some D. And he has a little fire in him. He gets, it seems like he gets pumped up, and he's always ready to play. So, and then, yeah, like you said, we really have had troubles putting up points against the Jazz with Knight being the only one to hit 20. So, I'm... Looking forward to maybe seeing Booker or Len, our two young guys. One of those guys have a good game. I'm really hoping for that. Yeah, definitely. Um, You said Stifle Tower, by the way. Great nickname for Gobert. Just another. We talked about a 3 6 Latvia last podcast. (laughs) But uh, Stifle Tower, another great nickname. Uh, We're going to go ahead and go to our challenge. Once again, just points, rebounds, and assists. Mitch, who do you think is going to have the most points for the Suns? Going Brandon Knight this time. All right. I think I'm going to go Booker. Uh, I think 
I really want to pick Brandon Knight, but I'm going to go against it and try it and hope the Booker can pull it out. Well, because you want to pick Knight, I'm going to pick Knight. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fair. You, it's I think that's a little bit of a safe one. I think Brandon Knight's shown that he can score against the Jazz. I'm pretty sure he didn't even play. I think he was out when we played him in January. So... That was the last time we played the Jazz, or was it February? Anyways, Brandon and I can score against them. I'm just hoping for a little bit of luck on my side. So, for rebounds, Mitch, who do you think is going to be the leading rebounder for the Suns? I am going to break my streak of saying Len, and I'm going to say P.J. Tucker. P.J. Tucker. I am not going to go with Len. I personally... I'm gonna go with Chandler. So I think that I think that Lynn is gonna be wrapped up on Gorbear most of the time, and I think that that'll leave Chandler a little bit better to try and grab that. I think PJ is also a really good choice, but yeah, I like that PJ I'm... choice too. But I, I'm not gonna copy you on it. I'll go. <laughs> I'll go with Lynn. I can see a lot of those rebounds between. Chandler and Len will be up for grabs because you know the Jazz are great rebounders. They have some nice size, so I'll just hope for Len with the luck of the draw. And I mean, Len was able to pull it out against Robin Lopez, who is a pretty good rebounder himself. So right. maybe that doesn't bother That's him as true. much as I'm thinking it will. But yeah, we will see. And finally, assists. Mitch, who do you think is going to have the most assists for the Suns? Um, I think I'm going to go Booker on this one. Booker? I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Brandon Knight again. I know I'm picking Booker to score, but, uh, I think that if Knight does end up leading with scoring, I think he'll end up leading with assists too. So I'm going to try and cover myself a little bit. All right. I'll take Booker on this one. All right. Uh, do we have anything else we want to talk about with the Jazz, or should we move on to the Lakers? I want to talk about nicknames. Mm. I say, of course, by the end of the season, we need to come up with the starting five of best nicknames in the NBA, current players. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. I think that. I mean, be- we already have. Go we ahead. already have our front court, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. 3-6 Latvia and Stifle Tower. Tower. So yep. So we'll have to round out with the guards and a small forward. But I say we. I think that's end think of that's the year. Doable. End of the year segment. We'll do that. I like that. Sounds good. We'll make sure to make a note of it. Yeah. Um. All right. So let's go ahead and go over to the Laker the Lakers game. So Mitch, do you want to go ahead and game? Yeah, we need to fight their youth with our youth. So the Lakers are a team that are kind of in a similar situation to us this year. They have a D'Angelo Russell who's playing really well this season, a young guy. And then a Julius Randall is another young guy who uh, I I like uh, who plays for the Lakers. And they're also fighting for, um, for draft position trying to uh, increase their lottery odds. Another guy who's young who I really like is Larry Nance Jr. Uh, I think they got a steal by picking him as late as they did. Uh, Really, really nice player. Uh, He went to the University of Wyoming, so I really like him because of that. And his dad, Larry Nance, son's great Larry Nance. I mean, he's... He's just awesome to watch. So explosive. Uh, And then we have our youth with the guys that we talk about every week with Booker and Len and Archie and, you know, all all the young guys. So, yeah, fight fight their youth with our youth. Yeah, it's pretty interesting because Larry Nance Jr. I think was projected to be a second-round pick or even a late second-round pick. Uh, He was projected pretty low, but he's been playing pretty well and his – his dunking has been pretty great to watch this season, mm-hmm. especially in preseason when he 
uh, murdered Vestas Azili, but... Yep. <laughs> hey, I want to hop in on this quick, too. Um, You're loud. Now I, do, I don't want to forget his name. Okay, we got Nance on the Lakers, and then that Dwight Powell on the Mavericks. Dwight Powell, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, where did these guys come from? Big, jump-out-of-the-gym, power-forward type guys that we could really use right now. We have yeah. Lure and Toledovich just kind of... They don't, they don't get up too high. So no. I'd like to see someone like that on our roster next year, to tell you the truth. That would be really nice. Yeah, the, those guys, that, those kind of power forwards, you either want someone that can jump out of the gym or who can shoot a three. And we have the threes, but we don't have a jump out of the gym guy. Right. I mean, Lure can kind of jump, but... He's a little bit more athletic than Mirza, but uh, yeah. well, and that's, <laughs> I'm gonna oh, go go oh, for it. There's some guys in the draft that could really uh, be great on our team that uh, are pretty explosive. Like, of course, Ben Simmons, he's gonna go first overall. So we don't. Uh, as of now, I'm not expecting to be able to get Simmons, but he is a very explosive player. And then uh, Ingram on Duke is another really explosive player that people are thinking will probably go two or three, depending on which team is drafting. And that could be us for all we know. So he'd be a nice addition. I'd be happy with Ingram. I've yeah watched uh, a bit of him uh, here and there when I have been and watched uh, like highlight reels and stuff. He, he looks mm-hmm. pretty good. He does look yeah. like that uh, Kevin Durant light that everyone's calling him. So mm-hmm. Yep. Very I saw light, a clip of but... him put up 16 straight points for Duke. It was 16 or 18. Mm-hmm. He just couldn't miss, and they were feeding him, and that's fun I, to watch. Oh, I yeah. watched his, uh, a little bit of Duke's game this week, I think it was. I don't remember who it was against. Uh, but something to, at the start of the game, he just was like 3-3 three three from 3 and just scoring like it was nothing. So Yeah. He's I would, good. I would not be against picking him up whatsoever if no, we can not land him in the draft. So my player to watch for the Lakers is going to be D'Angelo Russell. Uh, you could pick D'Angelo Russell, Jordan Clarkson, or Julius Randle. I think all three of those guys have really been playing a lot uh, and playing really well with them all three in the starting lineup. They've all scored 20 in a game together and just been playing really well. But I really like D'Angelo Russell. I know a lot of people were freaking out at the beginning of the year and saying that he was a bust already. But dude's young. He can shoot. He can score. He can pass. His vision is great. And I I really enjoy watching him play. And he's definitely a Lakers player through and through. And that he's... He's pretty he's pretty cocky, but it's kind of fun. When he hit uh when he was playing against the Nets and he hit that clutch three and he turned around and started pointing at his arm saying that he had ice in his veins. Pretty <laughs> cocky, but I kinda dug it. So uh he's definitely my player to watch. And uh Charlie, do you want to go a little bit more in depth for this game? Yeah, I have some really mixed feelings about this game. As of today, the Lakers are 14 and 52 and we are sitting at 17 and 49. So when you take a look at the draft lottery, I'm hoping that we lose this winnable game as much as I hate the Lakers. So it's really just whatever happens, I'm not going to be too excited about it would be the best way to put it. And then the the matchup of D'Angelo Russell and Devin Booker is pretty intriguing. They are two of the top scoring rookies this month and the whole season, but they're getting they're both going over 20 points a game this month so far. And then Jordan Clarkson is another guard who's been playing well this season, and that combo of him and Russell might give our guards some trouble on the defensive end. And I also believe this will be the Suns' last matchup against Kobe Bryant. Correct. This is our this ends the season series, right? Uh, no, we do have one more game against the Lakers. Oh, oh. so well, I'm the, off. 
So is this one at home then? This one, I believe this one. No, this one's at in LA. So oh, we'll have one more. I need to do my research. Wait, but to anyways, go. yeah. Whew. But anyways, <laughs> you know we're we're getting towards the end of watching Kobe play the Suns, and there's been, if you look back through the years, there's been a ton of great moments that mainly favor the Lakers. But uh, I'm mid- excited mid- to mid-2000s. see how everybody. Yeah, I'm excited to see how that goes. I want to see how the Suns fans, what what they really think of Kobe and, you know, just what a great career he's had. You know, he's had some ups and downs personally, but he's one of the best guys our age have ever watched play. So, yeah, just yeah. waiting to watch Kobe play. Yeah, definitely. I think this game is going to be from a watching standpoint. If you like watching young guys ball out, that's going to be this game. Definitely. So we're going to go to our challenge. Uh, who, Mitch, do you think is going to score the most points for the Suns? Uh, I think I want to go Len on this one. Len is a pretty good choice. I personally, I'm going to go Booker. I think that he can have a pretty decent matchup. And I also didn't want to pick Len because he picked him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> kind of. Kind of kidding. <laughs> All right. I'll Chuck. go with Mitch and I'll go with Len as well. I, we've been feeding him the ball in the post. And if he gets going, he can definitely put up 20 or more. So let's mm-hmm. go Len. Yeah, he'll have some pretty good matchups, I think, in this game. So we shall see definitely. All right, Mitch, rebounds. Who do you think is going to have the most rebounds for the Suns? I'm going to go Len on this too. And I think it will be interesting to see if he can keep his double-double streak going through these next three games. I agree. I'm going with Len. Uh, Roy Hibbert is not known very well for rebounding. And he's he's going to be the main one going up against uh I think that we can box him and Randall out a little bit, so I'm definitely going with Len. Len's all around. <laughs> Len, give me another. All right, so assists. Who do you think is going to have the most assists for us, Mitch? Um, Let's say Booker Len. on this one. Oh, wait, Booker. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. I thought about doing <laughs> Len for everything. <laughs> I don't think that'd hey, be a good one. He had six but... assists a couple weeks ago. That's pretty I good know. time for a center. Yeah. All right. For assists, I am going to go with Booker. I think that this might be one of those games where we give him a lot of touches, and I think that he could easily lead the team in assists. So. So this might not be how it goes, but this is how I want it to go. I don't want Devin Booker to pass the ball. I want him to <laughs> show up D'Angelo Russell all game. I I'd, I'd just love that. There's so many Lakers fans that get a little butthurt if you say that Booker's better than Russell. So <laughs> I'll, I'll go Knight with that one. Knight just because Booker's going to be shooting every time he has the ball. I can, yeah. I can dig that. I can dig that. All right, so I think we've talked about the Lakers game enough. So we're going to go ahead and go to our Player of the Week segment. Um, (laughs) There's not a whole lot, but I think just talking about Devin Booker's score in these last basically week and a half is worth it. Uh, We can talk about uh, Alex Lynn, of course, uh, keeping up with those double-doubles. Just talking about the young guys in general. I think both those guys have been playing really well and might as well talk about them a little bit more. One thing I noticed with Booker is he's starting to do the Eric Bledsoe special when he drives and he gets to the rim and goes, hey, and falls on the ground (laughs) and it still goes in. So uh, that's, that's pretty nice. I think his finishing at the rim has been really nice. Absolutely. And I to piggyback on that, I think Bledsoe learned that from Dragic. Oh. Dragic 
hollers every time he gets under the rim. He'll if he gets brushed with a little contact, he'll he'll holler pretty loud. And I think that may have rubbed off on Bled, which is now rubbing off on Booker. And if it if it gets him to the line, I'm cool with it. Yeah. You know, every guy has something a little different to uh, do. I know Westbrook says does that same thing. I think uh, when. Ever he get he goes driving. It's just something to try and get the refs' attention. And hey, it works out here and there. And yeah, I mean, you gotta it, do. in that Nuggets game, he went to the line eleven times. So I I can't complain. You know, whatever works works. And yep. that his his driving game has looked pretty darn good. Which for a guy that everyone thought would just be just a shooter and would probably have a hard time coming out of the draft at that. Hey, it's nice to see. Then of course, I saw about how Booker gets to the rack lately. I was just browsing our NBA on Reddit. And I assume this guy didn't watch a ton of Suns basketball, but he said, uh, that Booker, that game, I can't remember which one it was. I think it was the game. He went one for five from behind the three point line. He's got all of his points in the lane. He compared. He said he looks like James Harden getting to the rim, and I, I, I kind of laughed at that <laughs> because I don't think he's quite on that level yet. But you know, if one guy watches a game and sees him get to the lane like that, maybe, maybe we just overlook that ability because we're so we just think of him. Well, we used to think of him as just a jump shooter. So it's cool that he's getting a lot of attention around the league now. Oh yeah. After the uh, three-point shooting contest, he was definitely starting to get circled by a lot of guys, a lot of teams, and a lot of fans that didn't necessarily watch a whole lot of Suns basketball. His shooting is starting to come up, and I've never even thought about that for a comparison with his driving. I don't know if that's just because we're just not thinking about it and we're just too used to the Clay Thompson comparison, or if Mm -hmm. it's... Just something that not during that one game it kind of looked like, but his get his driving game, his all around Chris game in general. He has, uh, he's playing in the post if he thinks that he has a mismatch or he has a good matchup in general. Uh, can't talk enough about Booker. All in all, no. and one keeps on getting double doubles. I like that. He had 26, 26 points against the Warriors. He's scoring. He would have been the leading scorer, but Brandon Knight balled out too. So any other night that would have, or unless Booker scored 30, any other night that would have been uh, high for the team. I He's getting really close to just going out and getting those points all the time. I didn't watch a whole lot, but how did his jumper look? During the Warriors oh, game. Oh my gosh. Amazing. He was, was smooth last night. So nice. So nice. Yeah, it's... I was just saying the other day, I think that Alex Len is becoming my favorite Suns player. I I always... Of course, I like Devin Booker, and I really like Bledsoe, uh, but I just... I can appreciate these post guys so much, because... When I was playing basketball, which wasn't for very long, but when I was playing in school, I was always one of the taller kids, so I was playing the post, and so I was watching these post guys, and so I've just always kind of watched down low and really enjoyed watching nice post moves, and I'm not a big fan of the Mavericks, but I really like Dirk's game and really like the the just the post game in general. So Alex Len getting that figured out, is really awesome. His post moves have been great. He's been able to finish with more power sometimes, or he can drive sometimes from the high post, which I've really enjoyed watching. So yeah, Alex Len is just really, he's, he's climbing up my personal ladder of favorite player. Yeah, no, he's been playing really well. I, I personally always love post players as well. I love big guys. I love big guys and point guards always. Always will and always have. So whenever mm. a big guy starts balling out, I I appreciate it a little bit extra. Yeah. 
Yeah, like Mitch, I was one of the big dudes on my high school basketball team too. So I I love watching good post play. I love watching the footwork and the you know just protecting your protecting your shot so you can like the baby hook is just an all time mm. fa- one of my favorite shots. And one thing I'd like to, now that I'm talking about it, the up and under is my favorite move yes. in basketball. Oh, I love that move. And I think once Lens outside game starts to get a little better, which it has, and guys will be maybe keying on that when he fakes that turnaround jumper. I'd like to see him sink underneath the guy and go up to the rim. And he he actually was able to do that mm-hmm. a little bit in the Warriors game since he was making so many mid-range shots. Right. And I love watching us feed the ball to Len. It seems like to start the game, it, maybe Watson says, hey, it's got to got to touch Len in the post before anyone else scores. It's kind of like an old school mentality, but we feed him down there and even if he doesn't make the right move every time, he goes strong and he gets the ball up and you know he'll either get fouled or lately he's been making them. So, I love watching him operate the post. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's been getting uh to the line a lot more. Uh I personally he showed Shows it off here or there that he's got a little bit of a spin move. And he showed that off, uh, especially against when he's played the, both games against the Grizzlies, the Grizzlies really. But uh, he's got a little bit of a spin move. And just all in all, I think he's working a lot. I want to know what you guys think. Uh, I forget what one of you brought it up, but in that uh, low podcast. Or yeah. Where he's talking yes. about the Suns with Len and Chandler on the four scoring 84 points per 100 possession. Yep. So the, the Twin Towers lineup. I was just going to bring that up actually. It's apparently that lineup is really bad, but I was just going to say I love the high low post game. And so it's kind of fun to have them both on the court, but I mean what I kind of think is you know these teams have analytics guys looking at all of this. They know that this lineup probably is not producing amazingly and i kind of think it's just a a way to tank but i i don't know i'm not completely sure about that but that's kind of my theory right now let me hop in on that last night when the warriors made their run in the fourth we had chandler len and Mirza in <laughs> what in the oh, world and they yeah, were going small yeah. they didn't have spates or bogan in at that time and we were, we just looked like the monsters out there we yeah, looked huge really. compared to them but that's when they made their run i wonder if that was a tank move or if we really thought we'd take advantage of them down low but it really backfired for us and the game changed pretty quickly when we did that mm-hmm I, I feel like there's been one or two other times where Watson has put Mirza in as a three and it confuses me every single time. It's in my head it's gotta <laughs> he be can a shoot tank it move. Like a three. I mean he can shoot it, yeah, but he doesn't have nearly enough speed for a three. No. Or defense. Or defense for a three. So I uh, is it a tank move? Is it a Watson really thinks that it can work. I I have no idea, but I'm waiting for Lure to come in at the two next game. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah really. Yeah, yeah, I mean he can he can play guard, he can play forward, he can play center. Lure can do it all. <laughs> Johnny Badger. Johnny Badger. <laughs> um, I I would be really interested to see what that Twin Towers lineup what it allows. I know that we're not very good, so we're allowing a lot anyways, but, you know, if we're putting up, it does seem like that we're not doing too bad when it comes to that, and I definitely don't think that a lot of it has to do with Len for that 84 per 100. I definitely think that's not on Len. I think that I think that that could be the easy one to look at, just because, but I think that Twin Towers lineup's pretty rough, but I would like to see what it allows per 100 and see if that can match up a little bit at all or if we're just getting blown yeah, out with sure. that on the field. I bet, that on the I bet we out-rebound whoever we're playing yeah. when we have that lineup, though. <laughs> as long I, as the other yeah. team misses. Yeah. 
I, I have a feeling that the rebounding isn't a problem either with that lineup. And I think that we offensive rebound pretty well. So that could add into that per possessions. But, you know, I think that, rebound total rebounds is probably one of our better stats on the season league wide, I guess. Yeah. Not that's something only, I would I think have expected. We're 15th or 16th, so middle of the pack, but we're not at the top of the pack for anything. <laughs> but we're not no. awful at it, so there we go. <laughs> something Price to look balls. at. <laughs> yeah, rebounding has been a kind of bright spot. We've been out rebounding guys pretty well, especially in this last stretch. So, uh, any other guys you want to highlight just real quick? Or any young guys, any old guys, either one? I'm good. All right. So. We're going to go into our final thoughts. Which of our previewed games are you guys looking forward to the most? I'm going <sighs> Lakers. That Russell Russell versus Booker is what I'm looking forward to most out of the out of the 3 we have this week. I almost don't want to pick one of these because <laughs> every time I say one it just turns into a horrible game, but I'm going to go with the Timberwolves because I'm going to be on the road again with the Gonzaga basketball team. And so the only game that I'm going to be able to watch in full will be the Timberwolves. So I'll go with that. But uh, Wolves please, are going to beat us by 40. Please, now. please. So if you know don't, a game not I really to watch. hope that's not a jinx. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to watch a game this week and you're not sure which one it is, just don't watch the Timberwolves. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my... I think that you could make a case for the Timberwolves or the Lakers. I personally am looking a little bit forward, more forward to the Lakers. I like watching their young guys as well as our young guys. So there's that. All right. Non-sports related plug. Our last segment of the show. Uh, Mitch, you're probably the most non-Suns related plug or anything so why don't you go ahead and go yeah uh, so my plug this week is going to be kind of sports related but yeah who cares i i have to talk about this uh i have this really cool opportunity i'm in the gonzaga bulldog band and we're just the pet band that plays at all the home men's and women's basketball games and then we travel for the tournaments so i was just in las vegas for the west coast conference tournament and it was great I have to give a shout out to the Robert Perry network too. Uh, Robert is a good friend of mine and he posts all the Gonzaga basketball games on YouTube. So check out his channel. And if you want to watch some, some games and watch some film of prospects, Gonzaga's played some pretty good teams this year, like Arizona, UCLA, SMU. So if you want to see some of those prospects, you can check out the full games there and then all the tournament games Uh, He's put up for the conference tournament and then he'll put up the NCAA tournament uh, videos once they happen. But uh, I'll be on the road going to wherever we go. Uh, We're recording on Sunday and the selection show starts in about 30 minutes. So I'll find out where I'll be going soon. But yeah, it's really great to travel with the team. A lot of fun. Huge shout out to Eric McClellan who plays for Gonzaga, played really, really well in the tournament and took pictures with uh, me and some other band members after and, you know, just talked to us. It was really awesome to uh, to be able to do that. So, yeah, Gonzaga Bulldog Band, a lot of fun. I play electric bass. Uh, it was the last time I got to play bass since uh, I have to play tuba for NCAA since electric <laughs> instruments can't travel. So uh, playing through the fight song that that last time after beating St. Mary's was uh, brought back a lot of memories. So, but I, I'm really excited to get to go wherever we go next. Yeah. Got to watch you goofily dance on TV. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of just forget about everything else that's going on. So yeah, it, you might, I don't know if anyone who listens to this would know what I look like. Probably not, but Probably I'll be one the of better. the tuba players. You'll, if you see the Gonzaga tuba players, I'm one of them. <laughs> you should have said the most handsome tuba player. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I'll leave that up to the viewer. But don't boom. But uh, all right. <laughs> so, how are you gonna follow that, Chuck? How are you gonna follow that? Yeah. Blog? <laughs> we should have saved that for last. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't right. have a plug, so that's why I was okay with doing it, so, you know. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, last week and this week, I've had relatives in town here in Arizona coming from South Dakota to get out of the end of winter there and come enjoy some nice weather here. Uh, last week, my sister and her husband and my two nephews were down here, and my older nephew, Dawson, he's seven. And he likes to play basketball, which I am very excited about. Uh, <laughs> all of my other nephews were hockey players or won bowls. They, they just never got into basketball. So that, that was my favorite sport growing up and my best sport. So I was very happy to shoot some hoops with him and do some dribbling and passing and little drill work trying to get him ready to go for his big games. But that was a blast. And now this week we have my wife's family down here and they're doing a whole lot of the same thing just sitting by the pool and enjoying the weather and i'm just thankful that we live somewhere where we where our family wants to come visit because <laughs> i imagine if i live somewhere like cleveland they'd probably <laughs> never come so yeah i want to go to a browns game <laughs> no nah, i just don't see that happening but yeah nice to nice to live somewhere where people want to come visit that definitely, is really great. Definitely awesome. shout out to Arizona weather right now. I think we actually were, I'm at uh, near Havasu, we were almost hitting 90 this week. Wow. So I, it's pretty warm weather and not anywhere close to snow or any of the like. So I'll go with that plug too. Shout out to Arizona weather. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So, of course. We are on social media. You can find us on Facebook under the name Phoenix Suns Multiple Sources. Or you can follow us on Twitter at Sunny in PHX Pod. You can email us with questions, thoughts, or suggestions at Sunny in PHX Pod at gmail.com. And you can check us out at our website, multiplesources.net slash Phoenix Suns. And the entire Multiple Sources blog and podcast network, if you want to. Be looking in and seeing what they're doing. Check out any of their other podcasts. But of course, always come back to us. Thank you so much for listening. We're looking forward to watching the next few games and seeing how much the Timberwolves blow us out by since Mitch picked them uh. <laughs> before recording again. <laughs> Feel free to talk with us. Email us. Add us on Twitter. Message us on Facebook. Comment on Facebook. Any stuff about that, about the games. We'll be happy to hear from you. We'll be back next Monday. And... Go Suns!